So as my one and probably only entry to Martin Lamont's Hawker Harrier 50th anniversary group build, here is my entry, the Sea Harrier of the Indian Navy. Out of the box, here's the sprue bag, the instruction sheet, and the clear and high quality decals, which of course, I wouldn't be using. So let's go ahead and take a look at the sprues first. We have three sprues named A, B and C. Sprue A has the left side rear half of the fuselage and the upper part of the wings. Sprue B has the right side of the rear fuselage and the lower part of the wings, the exhaust nozzles, the pilot figure and the bombs. And Sprue C has the drop tanks, the Sea Eagle missiles and the nose section. As always, I began by assembling the weapons together as that gives me the momentum for the project. Here you can see me assembling the weapons, however at this stage I was still undecided on whether to load the Sea Harrier with the Sea Eagle missiles or the standard air-to-air -air configuration of drop tanks and air-to-air -air missiles. I then began painting the seat assembly with Femicryl Black, followed by some more detailing of the seat once the paint had dried up. I then began painting the pilot as I wanted to depict the Harrier in a flying configuration over a stand that I would build later. The cockpit instrument panel decal and side decals of the switches and controls followed next. The seat and the pilot were then assembled into the fuselage and I added Play-Doh as weight into the nose section. The next step was to assemble the rest of the fuselage so I first went for a dry test fit of all the parts to see if there are any defects that may need to be addressed early on in the build. The fitting of the exhaust nozzles was a fun part and as per the instructions the nozzle is supposed to be attached face down first to allow the exhaust deflector plates to align and then move the nozzle horizontally upwards to lock the deflectors with the nozzles. I was amazed at the engineering put into the kit at this point. The fuselage halves were then joined after fitting the turbofan engine installation within and I moved on to the rather simpler assemblies of the wings and horizontal stabilizers. I then attached the gun pods and the hard points. You can see the Sea Eagle missiles by the side and at this point I decided to go with the standard air-to-air -air configuration of drop tanks and R-550 magic missiles. The model was then primed with Bosni grey primer and pre-shaded with Fevicryl black. Once the pre-shading had dried off, I began painting the base coat of the Indian Air Force grey, which has a tint of green in it. The Indian Navy Sea Harriers were painted in the same fashion. Since the Sea Harrier was in a single color scheme, the entire painting was completed in two separate sittings of three hours each and three coats of the Indian Air Force grey.
I finally assembled the R550 Magic Air-to-Air missiles which I scratch built from the AIM-9 Sidewinders that were available with the kit. I then moved on to the deckling phase and used the bright spark decals on the model with my standard procedure of applying decals. I really liked the Norsena decal written in Hindi. It was a nice touch to the Harrier. Finally, it was time for a wee bit of weathering and I used the soft pastel water and dishwashing liquid method to weather down the Sea Harrier. The last Indian Navy Sea Harriers were retired in 2016 and they were pretty clean and well maintained. So I used just a very subtle bit of weathering to show its age. The last step was to attach the undercarriage and the canopy front and rear sections and the Sea Harrier was ready for the reveal. Mm -hmm. And here is the Sea Harrier FRS-51 of the Indian Navy from Indian Naval Air Squadron 300, the White Tigers, based on the aircraft carrier INS Virat also deployed at the Indian Naval Air Station at Dabulim, Goa. So that's it ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as I did building the kit. Hope to see you again soon. Have a great day and have fun modeling.